Okay, now we've got Linda Bayenfeld to talk about uh, there is a free lunch and Twitter helps to find it. There must be a lot of pretty pictures in this one. There's a lot of pictures. I'm talking about food, free food. Now, unless you're a gardener, your experience is mostly that food is what you buy. But for over two million years, that wasn't true. Nearly everyone was directly involved in finding and acquiring the food that they ate. Something else is important has also changed recently. We no longer spend time outdoors. For over two million years, observing and interacting with nature was a critical part of the human experience. Just a couple hundred years ago, that ended abruptly. We've tamed our environment, and the results are mostly good, but we also lost something of value, what was intrinsic to the human experience, a direct experience with a critical component of our lives, finding, gathering, and preparing wild foods. More than ever, technology pulls us away from the experience of nature. I'm using technology to bring people back. Twitter can, con Twitter can convey the basics. What can I find outside? And even more interesting, what can I find to eat? For most of human existence, those have been fundamental questions. Children have an intuitive sense about food. Many of you may recognize this wood sorrel. Perhaps you remember this sour, lemony taste. When I teach about wild plants, most kids learn faster and they remember more than their parents. We have a lot of woods around Ann Arbor. These are May apples. They're in the woods, are all around us, and they're a tropical tasting fruit that ripens in July. So there are a few tricks to wild crafting, it's true. But we're so out of touch with the food around us, many people would not try even these apples that were free for the taking. They just don't look right. The truth is that many of us wouldn't recognize food in the wild, even if it was growing on a tree. And these apples, they taste great. We can't go back to where we were so many thousands of years ago. It was a brutal time. But there are real benefits to foraging and wild crafting. Fresh air, exercise, there's also something more basic and satisfying. It's in our DNA to seek out wild food and experience pleasurable anticipation when we find it. Acorns provided 40 to 60% of the nutrients for people in this area up until about 200 years ago. Yet probably not many of you thought about stocking up on acorns for this winter. <laughs> they take a lot of work, collecting, extracting the meat, and there are tannins that have to be removed. Years ago, a bag of acorn meal would be placed in a stream to flush the toxins. Now you can run them under tap water. Or you can serve water using an otherwise underutilized stream in your home, the tank of your toilet. Every flush helps remove the bitter tannins. Acorns no longer seem like human food, but they can be used in very familiar ways. Well worth the work. These pancakes included wild black raspberries, which can be picked all over Ann Arbor. And I'll give you a hint, go to the schoolyards. So I Twitter every day. I post what is edible, what is ripe, what part to pick, how to prepare the food, even some ideas on how to cook it. What was once common knowledge. A daily reminder to go outside and some ideas of what you might find there. These are chicory flowers, by the way. The root is often roasted and it's used as a beverage. People who interact with nature are more likely to notice their environment, more likely to care about their environment, and they will then act to protect what they have found to be precious. This photo shows red sumac, a red staghorn sumac, and the fruits are used as a Middle Eastern spice and also as a lemony beverage. It can be hard work to gather plants. This is a mound of burdock roots and the second appearance of my dog's nose. She is the <laughs> ultimate forager. Humans have traditionally foraged with friends and family because it's just more fun. Like gardening, there's time invested in the preparation and processing of wild foods, it's a time to invite friends over, build community, tell stories, and enjoy the process. You don't have to be efficient, and it's often messy. This is from a free class sponsored by the Food Co-op. Here we have tinctures, pickles, herbal vinegar, and kimchi. I have an eight-year-old friend who started begging me for my dandelion root pickles whenever he came over, so I taught him how to make his own, which is a great way to deal with dandelions, and also with eight-year-old boys. <laughs> One of my Twitter followers told me that when she goes outside, the world looks different now just because she knows what to look for, and she's learned a few plants that she enjoys. This is second year Queen Anne's Lace, and the first year the, carrot, the roots are enjoyed as a wild carrot. Those mysterious plants that seem kind of dangerous, knowing that they aren't, and indeed you can even eat them, just helps to make going for a walk 
or in this case a canoe trip on the Heron River, more fun, friendly, and always an adventure. To solve our climate crisis and to preserve the environment, uh oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. To solve our climate crisis, preserve the environment for the future, I'm helping people to re-engage re with the natural world. It's just simply how humans have lived for millions of years, connected to and dependent on nature, a simple idea to add back into our lives with profound consequences. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me wildcrafting, because I'd like to change your perception of the world. Thank you, Linda.